Hello to all of you testing for the OEL project. Let's have a look at how to administer and score the TEMA. To give the test, you should all have the TEMA A book, three large index cards, 25 tokens, and the examiner record book, which we also call the score sheet, and the student worksheet. You'll need a pencil for the child if the child gets to number 15 and beyond. For the OEL project, each child will, will begin at item number one. All children ages three, four, and five will start at item one. The basal for this test is the highest consecutive, five consecutive correct responses. The ceiling, or when you stop, is the lowest five incorrect responses consecutive. So for example, even if the child misses number one, two, and three, but gets four, five, six, seven, and eight correct, we consider everything above eight as correct because there were five correct in a row. After the child has gotten his ceiling of five incorrect consecutive items, you will count the correct responses, remembering to use the highest basal and record the raw score right here on the front of the score sheet. All items on this test can be repeated and it is not a time test. As long as the child is attending to the problem, he can work at his own pace. However, if you feel that the child just isn't responding because he doesn't know the answer, encourage him to move to the next item. To give the test, you will have to have the book open between you and the child since both of you will refer to it. So if the child is here, this book is between us. The score sheet can be on a clipboard or off to the side somewhere where you can see it, but the child can't see whether or not he's getting ones and zeros. The book is clearly labeled on each page as to what item and trial you're on, and that matches your score sheet. So on the first page of the test, it says, card A, capital A, one, dash, little a. The capital A just means it's team of form A. That's what all pages have to start with the, the capital A. Item number one and the little a is the first trial for item number one. Now let's have a look at the score sheet. For each item, such as A1, it tells you the materials you need. Next is the stimulus, which is just the shortened version of the question in the book. The correct answers for each trial and the criteria that the child must meet in order to get a correct score. So all items get either a one or a zero. And in order to get a one, it tells you how many of the trials they need to get correct to get a score of one. So for example, A1, they need three out of three. They have to get A, B, and C correct to get that score. If, however, the child misses A, he or she can no longer get three out of three, give the score a zero, and move to the next item. All right. <clears throat> if the child gives you a correct response, you want to circle that item, that trial, and if he gives you an incorrect response, you need to strike it out and write in his error, that his error response. That'll give the double score or something to use um, to make sure that it was scored correctly. Okay. Notice, if you will, look down at number four on the score sheet. Some items have a P in front of the, the trials. That just stands for practice. And you're welcome to circle it if they get it correct, but do be careful that you don't use that practice um, item towards the criteria. The practice never counts into the criteria. The four out of four means A, B, C, and D. Okay. So the child you'll be testing will be three, four, or five years old. I would read through the entire test, make sure you know how to give the entire test and have no questions about any item, but make yourself especially familiar with probably the first two pages of the score sheet um, through, through about age six. After that, there are no, uh, you don't use the tokens anymore and 
the directions are much more straightforward. But early on, and you'll definitely be doing it with the three, four, I mean, three, four, and five years old, years old, you'll be using tokens. And it's hard enough to juggle the tokens and a small child without trying to figure out how to give the item. So definitely practice the, the early through age six. You will notice that the book has significantly more directions for you than the stimulus. You'll need to depend on the book to tell you exactly what to say and do for each item. And your, uh, your script for each item is clearly written in green. It tells you what to say or do, perhaps if the child is correct or incorrect for the response. Okay, let's have a look at a few of the items. Number one, you'll notice when it says how many cats do you see, that in the materials, it doesn't mention anything about hand or fingers, so that means that it's got to be an oral response. Number two and three, it tells you in the materials that you need hands or fingers, um, but number one does not. Okay, number five, let's open the book to page, not page five, but item five. This is one where we need the index cards and tokens. And it goes like this. We're going to play a hiding game. Watch. And it tells you to put one token on the mat, on your mat. And make sure the child sees it for about three seconds. And the child has to look at it because he, if he doesn't, he can't get it right. Then you cover it. Give the card to the child and say, and it says you need, the child needs 12 tokens. Make yours just like mine. If the child is confused by that, they put as many tokens on your mat as I have under here. And it tells you what to do if, you, if the child responds correctly or incorrectly. So all that is listed on, in the book. Okay, now, Let's look at number six and number seven. These two are tied together. You can't do one without the other. Let's play a hide the stars game. I'll show you a card with some stars on it. The page is the, is the card. You count the stars. Count these stars. And then they'll say one, two. Then turn it over or cover it and say, how many stars did you count? So the counting part, one, two, is number six. The covering up, how many stars did you count, is number seven. So in other words, you're going to go six practice, seven practice. Six A, seven A. Six B, seven B. Like that. So those two are tied together. All right, let's move to number eight which is similar to the one we just did with the cards and the tokens, except this time you're going to be adding and subtracting from underneath your mat. So it says, let's play a hiding game. Watch. You put one token on the card. Make sure they see it. Cover it up. Then you get another token and make sure they see it. And slide it in next to that first token. Then they get a chance to make theirs just like yours how many are under here. And you'll notice on the trials, there are five trials. Um, some are addition and some are subtraction where you'll slide one out and they have to pay attention to that. And they have to get four of the five correct in order to get a one for that item. But there are multiple answers. They don't have to have the exact number. Um, if you'll notice, A can be three or four. C can be four or five, and E can even be three, four, or five. All correct answers. All right, now for number nine, what you'll do is you put the tokens in a row, you count them. I'm going to count some tokens, then I'm going to move them around. Then without counting, you tell me how many tokens there are. Watch as I count. One, two, three. 
How many are there? They'll say three. Then you just make a shape out of them. And then again, you ask how many tokens are there? So they have, just have to remember that they counted to three, even though the shape has changed. And if they do try to count, you can cover it up and say, oh, just tell me without counting, see if you can remember. So for the first one becomes a triangle, the second one becomes a circle, and the last one just becomes a clump. Okay, now, um, number 13. Let me talk about number 13. If you look, it says, count with me. One, two, three, four, then comes. If the child does not respond five, you stop testing with number 13 altogether. You don't even do the practice. That's just an introduction before the practice. Um, to show that on the worksheet, on the score sheet, you would have to strike through all practice tr and trial items and write an NA. Otherwise, if you just leave it blank, it will be confusing to us here. Um, and that same introduction of making them say five after you count to one, two, three, four also occurs in number 22. So you might want to put um, sticky notes or something on those two items to remind you that you don't even get to the practice if they can't answer five after you say one, two, three, four. Right. If you get to number 15, you have made it to the worksheet. Okay, number 15. If you'll look on number 15, there are three trials and only a rectangle. They need to write three numbers in this box. And you can see here um, the numbers obviously correspond to what item you're on in the book. You need to tell, you tell the child to write what the, uh, number seven, number three, and number nine. And you'll have to point exactly where you want them to write each time so they can manage to fit it in the box. If you need more space, use the back, but just label it carefully with the item number in the trial. Reversals are fine, you'll notice in the score criteria. So if they do their seven backwards, it doesn't matter. Still correct. Sloppy handwriting is fine. So if you um, think it kind of might be a seven, three, or nine, um, give it credit. And if you're not sure, just do all trials, and we'll decide here. Okay. Look at number 17 on this score criteria. Notice that there are lots of correct responses. Letter A, trial A, any number from 1 to 4 is correct. B, any number greater than 7 is correct. C, any number less than 7 is correct. And D, any number greater than 4 is correct. And that's a 4 out of 4. That's going to be hard for them to get, so probably won't have to give all of those. All right, that's number 17. Number 18. Here's another one where they have to write. So they'll have their pencil again. And this time there, is four, there are four trials for them to write in this small rectangle. So again, you'll have to show them just where you want them to write. And if you need more space, use the back and label it. All right, this is how you do it. You say, here's a picture of some dogs. And then you have to pretend that you can't see the dogs. I can't see how many dogs there are. Use this paper, make sure you point where, and pencil, and show me how many dogs there are. If they draw pictures of dogs, it's not acceptable. You want, then you say, can you show me another way to, without pictures? And they're allowed to write the numerals. They're allowed to write dots, tally marks, um, pretty much anything except pictures of dogs. And again, reversals are fine. Sloppy handwriting is fine. If you think it looks pretty much like a two, just take it. Um, and if you keep reading, it says, if the child cannot do this item, item 18A, discontinue and move to number 19. But you need to make sure that it really is wrong before you move on. And in fact, I would probably just go ahead and do the other trials for those. All right, number 21. 
Number 21 asks the child to count up as high as they can, but he only needs to count to 21 to get credit. But if you look down at number 31, count as high as you can, but he, they want you to get to 42. So if the child is counting very well at, when, when you're on number 21, just let them continue and see if they can get up to 40 or 50, and then you don't have to do 31 again later. You've already, they've already done their counting. Okay. <clears throat> Look at number 30. Again, children have to write numbers on the worksheet here. This time there's just two. The first one is 23. The second one is 97. So they're two dig digit numbers now. It says reversal okay on the criteria, but that's only each digit reversed. So 23, the 2 has to come first, the 3 has to come second, but they can be switched around. Um, unfortunately, the book has a little mistake when it explains 97, so dis, uh, disregard what it says about 97. It has the 7 and then the 9 first and says it's okay, but that's not. Okay. So the digits can be reversed, but they can't be swapped. All right, and... Lastly, just in case you get into the eight-year-old stuff, you might with a, with a five-year-old, I don't know. Um, let me just explain the score criteria here. These become math facts, and they need to know them quickly and without counting. So in the criteria, it says four out of four, no counting in less than three seconds. So if they get it correct, but they count it on their fingers, you can go ahead and circle it. Um, but then also circle counting, then they would get a zero. And again, if it took them longer than three seconds and they got it right, go ahead and circle it, um, but somehow note that it was longer than three seconds. All right, well, if you have any other questions about administration of this test after you review it and read through the whole test, Please contact us before giving the test and we will answer all questions for you as best we can and good luck. Thanks.